Hey, everyone, and welcome to the Americana Station podcast. I am your host, Will Payne Harrison. Thank you so much for being with me today. I am sorry that I'm a couple of days late on this podcast. Um, I have been moving, and I had to reset up my entire studio uh, in my new space, so that took a couple extra days than I had anticipated. So uh, today is Wednesday, and I am releasing the new episode with Elijah Ocean. Um, what is going on? Well, first I can tell you, I booked my first gig of 2021 this week. I'll be playing at Sawstone Brewing Company in Morstead, Kentucky, uh, June 4th. So uh, I better dust off my guitar and start remembering all my songs. Uh, so come join me if you're in the Kentucky area on June 4th. I'll be playing uh, my first gig of the year, halfway through the year trying to remember all the words, not drinking too much beer so that I can uh, actually remember the words to my songs. It'll be a fun time. Um, I'm excited. And uh, yeah, that's what I got going on so far this year. And uh, next weekend, I will also be recording drums for my new record, which is also exciting. Uh, So lots of good stuff coming in uh, the second half of 2021 in the world of Will Payne Harrison. But uh, let's talk about the world of Elijah Ocean. Uh, His band, The Rose Petals, have a new record that uh, just came out, and it is kind of a uh, folk rock record. It's a little bit of a departure from his normal honky-tonk that he does uh, as a solo artist. We talk all about that today's uh, in today's episode. Um, I also want to mention I have a host of amazing artists that are coming onto the podcast soon, um, including Volk, V-O-L-K, Volk. And uh, let's see, we got, um, let me just pull up my schedule real quick. Let's see who we got here. Um, we also have Adim, the artist. Um, he's coming on uh, in a few weeks. Uh, if you haven't checked out his record, it's been out for, sorry, their record. It's been out for a while. Um, and it is uh, really, really good. And uh, Shea Martin Lovett from Mipso is going to be uh, on the show. We confirmed that one. And Tall Paul also. Uh, and there's a few more that we're still that are still pending that we're working on. So this is going to be a really good summer of really good music. And uh, I am excited. And I, if you haven't followed the uh, podcast to get the updated episodes, uh, now's the time to do it. Uh, please rate and review. Um, I was uh, able to get into the top 10 when you search for Americana podcasts uh, this week, finally, which is super exciting to be in the top 10. Uh, And let's, let's keep rolling on up. Uh, So, I mean, and that's only with 33 reviews right now that we have on uh, Apple podcasts. So as you can see, the ratings and reviews really, really help to get more people and more eyes on it. So um, if you could help me by, just um, rating and reviewing on Apple Podcast or your favorite podcasting platform to help get um, the uh, m- you know more eyes on it. it the, the higher I am in the rankings, the more uh, people will see it and listen to the episodes, and that means more f- people get to hear th- their new favorite bands that they might not have heard of otherwise, bands and artists. So, um. Without further ado, let's let's get into the episode. We're going to talk to uh, Elijah Ocean today, um, and uh, also we've got some video content that is in the works as well. And uh, I did a little Q and A session that I'll be posting uh, video links of sometime in the near future. Um, so stick around, and uh, here we go.
Hey everyone, welcome to the podcast today. I have Elijah Ocean on the podcast, not uh, Elijah Wood, as D's Lounge right called you the other day. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what they put on the calendar. Um, <laughs> but actually, like that happens to me pretty regularly. It's happened it's like, to me like, a bunch of times. That's funny. You, you, I mean, it, <clears throat> I don't, I don't see how they get it confused, but I, I definitely laughed when I saw that and wondered if anyone came out to see Elijah Wood play. Yeah, that's the thing. There was nobody there anyway, so <laughs> didn't really work in my favor, I guess. Yeah, well, man, I have seen you play before, uh, actually at the five spot, and I, I wondered um, if that's when you wrote the song. Uh, I left my one spot at the five spot. Um, yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, actually like playing at the five spot was one of the first gigs I started doing in Nashville when I started coming down here, um, earlier on in my career. And, um, I would like always play the, the, uh, Tuesday night there with Derek. Yeah. And it was always, it's always like a really fun time and stuff, but, but, um, yeah, I mean, it's, the song is basically like a, just a joke about that, that night you know <laughs> was that did you play with garrett t caps by chance that night um i i think one of the nights was he was probably on the bill it's it's funny over the years i i get up confused because like i remember one night it was like mike and the moon pies and um who else was oh like alex williams do you know him um, I don't think I do. There was like, I don't know. I, I kind of get it confused. I do believe that um, Garrett was on the bill at one point on one of those nights. Yeah, yeah. I remember because a lot of times it would be like indie bands or local bands and stuff like that. And I went because uh, we would often go and I was like, oh man, this is like a lot of like really good honky tonk stuff going on tonight. It was super cool. Yeah. It's always fun. Um but uh, the incident in the song, like I d- didn't ever actually like left my power adapter at the, <laughs> at the five spot. That's just kind of a joke. I mean, actually, like a friend of mine came up with the song title, and um, I ended up writing the song. Um, it's actually like credited as a co-write because he came up with the title. That's great. My friend who actually goes with me a lot uh, to the Tuesday nights, um, he his whole thing is like he'll never say when he's going to meet you he always just says we'll play it by beer and so i, I use that as a title for a song yep it's great good stuff so um, um you're from los angeles or were you just living out there i was just living there um i was there for a, a little over six years i actually grew up in maine oh awesome um but yeah, I was just out there for for a little while, and uh, now I'm in Nashville. Did you come before COVID or during the whole thing? I just got to town like a month ago. Basically. Wow, that's awesome! So you were like, "I'm coming to town. I'm starting a record label. Let's drop some singles." <laughs> All yeah. within the yeah, that's that's. That's uh that's powerful stuff right there. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, things were kind of lining up, I guess in that way. I feel like they kind of do like um I've always kind of like released records or made like big changes at the same time that I'm like moving places. It's kind of just always lined up that way. I released a record when I left Maine for New York. I released a record when I left New York for LA. Um I don't know. It's just, it's not, it's not even something that I just like, I'm planning. It just kind of <clears throat> like works out that way. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about, um, uh, you released a single, but it was a, it was actually like two singles. It was like an A and a B side, um, with another artist. And is he on Envoy Records, your record label as well? Yeah, that's Peter Donovan and he's my partner, um, <clears throat> for Envoy Records. And, uh, yeah, that was like the first release on our label and we basically wanted to kick it off that way with just like a split single. Um, 
I I ended up producing both the songs. Um, but yeah, it, it was kind of just like a fitting way to <clears throat> to kind of launch the thing, you know, like, um, and the songs kind of went together in a way because they both have a similar theme. They're like both kind of like road trip songs about starting over or like fresh beginnings. Right. Yeah. And so, but you're also starting, you also started a new band called the Rose Petals. Yes. Um, Peter and I started that band, the Rose Petals. Um, we actually like started that band a few years ago, um, basically just to, to make that record. And um, the band has never played a show. Um, we, we basically just like made that record and then kind of sat on it for a while. And then we were like shopping it around and trying to get labels on board and um, I think like kind of every, all of our lines that were out in the water kind of fell through. And so that's kind of why we decided to start this label. Um, just to release that record basically. Um, but then we were like, Oh, like he's got a solo album and I've got a solo album and like, we're both producing other artists and stuff. So like hopefully down the line, it can become kind of like a vehicle for, for that. For, yeah, for different releases. That's super smart thinking. I actually have thought about starting my own record label too, just because you get to keep all the the publishing and the, you know, the rights and everything. Uh, but, you know, there is something nice about someone else doing the work for you <laughs> too. That's the thing. It's so much work. It's kind of crazy. Like, I, I didn't even, I didn't even think I knew how much work it was going to be going into it. Um, but you know, I guess it's just like the more you can do, the better. There's so many different aspects and, you know, cause I do a lot of the graphic design stuff, like the web design, the web store. And then there's like the legal side of things and just trying to like keep up with all the social media and everything. It's like, yeah. It's a lot. Yeah. And you're just a two person team, right? Basically. Yeah. Yeah. For right now. Um, yeah, we have uh, Sweetheart PR that's been doing um, some PR work for us, but uh, that's basically it. Right. Yeah. And you, so you're on the showcase, but by the time this uh, airs, it will have already happened. But you're you're playing the showcase, uh, opening up the basement. There, I think it's their first night back, right? Um, and I think so. Right. So your show was awesome. You were incredible. You're on fire, man. <laughs> you really killed it. <laughs> oh yeah, what a wild, what a wild day. Yeah, just, I mean, I never would have thought that you would have set the whole stage on fire, but, you know, that was awesome. Yeah, literally. <clears throat> yeah, I had to do it, you know, it's something I, I just was just feeling in the, in the moment. <laughs> Are you bringing your full band for the uh, performance? Yeah, we're going to have a five-piece band, um, Tally and Steel, and uh, uh, I'm going to do a bunch of new songs, actually. Some, some of the older stuff, but... Um, half stuff that has not been released yet and so is there more solo stuff in the work later down uh, the pipeline uh, on Envoy Records yeah actually um, I'm putting out a new record in August uh, my solo album it's called Born Blue and I guess this is the first announcement of that oh sweet <laughs> Let, yeah, let it out of the bag. Um, heard, it, heard it here first. That's awesome. But it's actually a record I've been working on for quite a while. It's And it's been done since last August, really. It's, it was mastered last August. But um, finally have a date, and uh, I'm really excited about that. Because, yeah, it's something I've put a lot of time into. And um, Does the excitement change when you've been sitting on it that long, though? Or Yeah, I guess. I mean, it comes in waves, you know, it's like, I try to stay excited, you know, it's just like, listen to it and like, think about it and stuff. And like, I haven't played a lot of the songs live. And so, you know, I'm working the, them up with the band now. And um, I still am very happy with the record. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. I was asking that because I'm actually jumping in the studio um, in the next month, but I'm probably going to have to sit on the, the record for a while. <laughs> And uh, I know like once I've heard 
my record, you know, all the mixes, all the masters, and then you sit on it for a really long time, <laughs> you know, you don't, uh, you're not as excited as maybe the fans are <laughs> what, when it, they finally hear it, you know? I know what you mean. Um, yeah. It's something I feel like I've gotten used to as, as an artist. And it just like, like one of the songs on the album is I wrote in like 2014, you know? Yeah. Like from the, like that's probably the, when I'm the most excited about a song is like at, right as after I write it, you know? Exactly. Yeah. And then when it comes time to record it, it's like, oh, there's another level of excitement. But finishing a record and mixing it and mastering it and then going through the process to release it, it's it's like you got to have a lot of like patience with it or like, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, yeah, totally. What is your like writing process? Uh, are you a person that sits on a song for a long time or are you just like knock it out in an hour and you're done? Um. I've done, I've done it both ways. Like, uh, I write a lot of songs, like, um, but I will also go through periods of time where I'm not writing and like, I've never really like worried about that or like, that doesn't really stress me out. I'm not like, Oh no, the well's dried up or something. Like I never, I never like force myself to write. Um, but like, then it'll just come it'll just happen and <clears throat> I'll, I'll write a lot, you know, really fast. And then, um, I think the, like the revision process is, is something that takes a long time, you know, like I'll go through like line by line, like really like analyze the intention of the, the narrator and the, the voice and, each word is important and like the melody and you know um but i don't know i think some of my best songs have probably just been like written really fast you know yeah 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 i think that makes sense where you like i'll write it fast and then maybe edit it later um mm. and yeah that definitely is usually how it, it comes out best uh with the rose petals and your new record american grenadine um did peter share co-writing on the whole record did you write whole songs and just you know share one or the other how did how did that process work for y'all so for that record um he wrote all the lyrics <clears throat> and uh he would just send me a set of lyrics and i would just write the music for it um and so, yeah, we co-wrote all the songs, but he wrote all the lyrics. I wrote all the music and I've been writing songs with Peter since like 2008. Um, we met in Maine and we we're in a band together and we started writing songs and we've written songs in a lot of different ways, but we kind of settled early on that. Like we had this thing that happened when he would just send me a set of lyrics. I would just sit down with the guitar and I would just write the music, the melody, um, and the chords basically in a very short amount of time. Like it would be done in like 10 minutes. Like, yeah, I would just look at the lyrics and I would just sing like whatever just came out and like not think about it too much and record it, you know, just, and, and not even be like, Oh, this is awesome. You know, just be like, cool. Like this is, this is fine. It's a song. And then I would listen back. I'm like, actually, that's really good. And we just started doing that like all the time. And, um, we figured out that was the best way we worked. So <clears throat> yeah, when we started doing the songs for this album, he started sending me sets of lyrics and I, I didn't even know what they were about. Um, you know, it's just kind of like, they're kind of like, it's a lot, I feel a lot of like imagery and a lot of like, vague references and stuff and um after we had written them all like he finally told me that they were all each each song is about a different u.s president <laughs> yeah uh, so it's like i didn't even know really know like what the meaning was behind him but uh i think it turned out cool it's like a it's like a different thing like i never would have written that record on my own you know yeah i i definitely don't think i've really ever written that way before yeah, it's cool. Actually, like, 
I love writing music to a set of lyrics that's already been written, whether or not I wrote the lyrics or it's somebody else. Like it's, it's always like really like a lot easier for me or something like, um, cause like the lyrics are written and they're right there and it kind of like writes itself. The music, you know, it's just, yeah, there's less judgment <laughs> when the lyrics are already written. Yeah, it's true. Um, so ideally, like, if I was writing a song myself, I would sit there and just write the lyrics and then um, make the music. But I kind of, I definitely don't do that. I, like, do them at the same time, basically, usually. So the the, the duo record um, is a little bit more, I guess, Americana-ish, like... Uh, I don't, I don't know. What would, what would you call it? Like folk rock or. Yeah. I think we started trying to like categorize it, you know, and like, I think folk rock is a good one or, uh, we jangle pop. I like that one a lot. (laughs) Um, I think of it as like, there's like this lineage of rock bands, you know, maybe starting with like the birds, which was definitely folk rock, you know, they're uh, rock and roll guys d- doing Bob Dylan songs, you know? And, right. uh, but there's like Roger McGuinn's 12 string guitar. That's like the sound, you know, and tambourines. Yeah. Hey, Mr. Tambourine. Um, but then like that whole lineage of bands, you know, through like the heartbreakers and, uh, I guess like the replacements and, and REM and, Gin Blossoms and bands like that. Um, I think consider that like jangle pop. There was a big eighties jangle pop movement too. Um, but that was kind of like the lineage that we were trying to like expand on, I guess, uh, with the sound. And you, and you produced the whole record. Um, you know, I, I'm not taking production credit for the record. I feel like, uh, we all kind of produced it as a band. The, my friend Zach Jones played uh, bass and keys, and my friend Curran played drums. And I did all the guitar work on the record, and Peter and I both sang. Um, and then our engineer, Dan Destiny, had a big part to do with the sound as well. Um, like, as far as like, I, as far as like the production credit, I think everybody is kind of credited as a producer. Um, or nobody's credited as a producer. (laughs) (laughs) Um, You know, I definitely had a big part to do with uh, the creation of the sound, but I wouldn't say that I was the producer on that one. I was just interested in the, in the process of uh, producing something kind of, I guess with, with the influences you just mentioned, like with the birds and the uh, heartbreakers and, and stuff like that. Was it like just spur of the moment or was there a lot of like, pre and post production type work. Um, Peter and I demoed all the songs um, with just acoustic guitars and vocals uh, beforehand. And and so I had come up with some like lead lines and stuff and like uh, hook melodies for guitar. Um, And then he came to LA and we, we did like two or three days of pre pro with, the bass player keyboard is Zach um, in my apartment. And we just like played through the tunes and charted them out and like talked about the sound we wanted. And we actually watched a bunch of like videos on YouTube of like nineties stuff, eighties and nineties stuff. Um, You know, just to like get ideas for sounds, I guess. Um, we wanted it. We wanted to like take references from the '60s, the '70s, the '80s, and the '90s. You know, like, and so it, in that way, like, make something that you can't really put your finger on, or like, uh, right, something new. Because it's we're not trying to just sound like the '80s or sound like the '90s. It's just like something uh, new, combining all the like different elements from those. Um, time periods um but yeah we had like one full band rehearsal the night before we went in to the studio and we did the whole, whole record in i think it was five days um in was a way, live tracking 
We did uh, bass and drums and rhythm guitar live with Peter just singing scratch vocal, and then for two days, and then we we did overdubs for the uh, for the second three days, and it was like it was a lot of guitar stuff. I did like I spent a lot of time on the guitars. You have to, yeah. Um, I had a yeah, like all these different twelve strings. I had this like uh octave 12 string guitar that um oh it's like a it's like a 12 string but it's an octave higher than a 12 string so it's it's really chimey yeah um you two use that a lot um on their records um i would imagine 50 percent of the <laughs> the guitar time was just you tuning those 12 strings yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure um it definitely took up a lot but uh yeah, we kind of like experimented a lot with the guitar sounds, um, using some different tape delay things and all these different layers of like chimey twelve string stuff, and and then we spent a lot of time on keyboards and all the vocals were done too in that in that time, and um, it was really fun, you know. Looking back on it, it's like we were just like kind of just like having a good time, you know. So is the first single coming out on like President's Day or no? Um, just... You know what? I think it actually did come out, come out on President's Day. Was that really? was, it was in February, right? Yeah. I think it I think the first single actually did come out on President's Day. <laughs> and it, like we didn't even realize that it was President's Day until like the day before. I was like, "Oh, my calendar says it's the single release and also you're just brilliant and you didn't even know it." Yeah. That was definitely a, a a mistake. Well, <laughs> happy mistake. Are y'all planning on doing now that things are getting a little bit more, I guess, promising for at least late summer, early fall? Are you planning on doing any touring behind the uh, new record? Um, I, I'm definitely going to be touring on my solo record at that point. Um, I I would love to to do a run with the Rose Petals. Um, I bet we can probably make that happen. Um, we're all so spread out now. Like Zach Jones moved moved to Maine. Um, Curran's still in LA. He's like working there, and Peter is in Seattle, and I'm in Nashville. So we're we're all in different parts of the country. Um, wow, yeah. At this point, but you know, if we had a had a run, we could all fly in and rehearse and do it. You know, we'll see. I hope so. I think it's a special band, you know, it's a special record. And like, I think people are going to like it. And, um, I would love to, to get in the van with those guys for sure. It, it sounds like it's checking all my boxes. I, I have a couple of, uh, private links that I'm definitely, I should have checked. I apologize. I should have checked before we uh, started this. Uh, but, um, I'm definitely looking forward to hearing some of this stuff because, uh, just you describing it sounds like it's going to be really good. Oh, for sure. And, um, I, I dig it. It's different. It's like, yeah, it's different. I think it's different than anything else I've made. Um, I'm a huge Petty fan too. So like anything that's like that Heartland or like Bruce Springsteen, you know, like the Heartland rock and the, yeah, the 12 strings and the oh, yeah. folk stuff is right up my alley. It sounds like it's going to be really good, man. Um, with, so you, you lived in Los Angeles for six years and you, you do, as your solo career, you do more like a country side of thing. What does that really look like these days? Cause you know, I've, I've heard, you know, I know Jason Hawk Harris and then, um, is it, uh, Jesse Daniel, I think is out there. Um, is the scene like, you know, thriving or is it kind of like pockets for the country? Um, I think it's thriving. Yeah. I think, I mean, I, I watched it grow in the six years that I lived there for sure. Um, yeah, I've played shows with Jesse Daniel. I've played shows with Jason. Um, you get to know a lot of people really fast, like because it is kind of close knit in a way. Um, when I first got to LA, like I <clears throat> I was coming from New York, and I had just like kind of like picked up the bass as a as like a honky tonk instrument and I was playing at skinny Dennis there like pretty regularly, like long nights. And I, when I got to LA, I, 
I found a gig on Craigslist playing at this dance hall in Chatsworth called the Cowboy Palace. Um, and so that's basically like this old school dance hall and um, people have been doing uh, line dancing and like two-stepping there to live music for decades, you know, since the, <clears throat> since the late seventies, I believe and they have music seven nights a week. And I got, I got that gig and that led to like this whole other circuit of bands that was like, that's not really like on that same kind of uh radar, you know, it's like working country bands and we would, we would play at all these dance halls and um, casinos in the desert and like go out to Vegas and do casinos there. And um, I was like working pretty regularly with all these guys doing country dance music. Um, and that's pretty much like how I was like making a living when I was there. And um, I learned a lot really um, about country music and like the history of it and um, you know, what works to get people's attention and what people like to dance to and stuff. Um, so yeah, there's like, there's a giant love and appreciation for country music on the West coast. Like absolutely. And I think the history, um, is a very special, uh, part of country music too. Um, for sure. Yeah. From that side of the country. Have you been uh, working from home and trying to improve your home studio? I want to talk to you today about soundproofyourstudio.com. Uh, they help create your dream home studio. Uh, I know with COVID, it's hard to get out and uh, go to a regular studio. And a lot of us have been building up our home studios. And uh, they, if you sign up, they give you a free soundproofing course and you get 10 secrets to pro recordings and mixes. Not only that, but I was also sent a studio build checklist uh, for signing up. So make sure you go to soundproofyourstudio.com. That's soundproofyourstudio.com today. Are you a fan of Americana music and you want to hear the latest and greatest reviews and uh, opinions on the up and coming artists in the scene? Well, then you need to visit americanahighways.org. That's americanahighways.org for reviews like Crown Over by yours truly and playlists like the Backroads playlist by yours truly. There's lots of great reviews on there and uh, you should check it out, americanahighways.org. And now back to the interview. And, yeah. Uh, there's yeah. a lot of like killer uh, players that came from there and are coming from there right now. Um, I'm still learning about them all because, uh, you know, we got so many here in Nashville um, trying to branch out more uh, to the West Coast and, and hear about more of those. Because, you know, I've toured, I've only toured the West Coast once and I didn't play with a single country band. It was mostly like indie folk type stuff. And they're like, that's close enough. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's a lot. And they, there's, You've probably heard of the Grand Old Echo, which yeah. is a thing that happens on Sundays um, at the Echo in Echo Park, and um, that is like the kind of the center of another like pocket of country community um, that exists out there. And there's like so many um, great players and um, songwriters and artists involved with that scene as well. Um, so it's it's great i think um you know i'm i love la and i love california and i love like so many other people i met out there um it's like a really inspiring place um with the nature and just like yeah the i don't know just like it's like party time out there all the time you know which is probably a, a big departure from uh, maine i imagine <laughs> <laughs> It's different, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Maine is super rural and um I mean people like to have a good time there, but yeah, it's like think uh things are things are a little looser out in LA or out in, on the West Coast, I think. It's a different different vibe. So when you were in Maine, were you uh playing country music or did the, that kind of grow on you as you went to LA? Um, I wasn't really playing country music in Maine. Um, when I, 
I grew up in Maine and, you know, we, I grew up listening to a lot of country music. Um, but I was, when I started playing guitar, I was playing like bl- more blues and rock and roll and f- folk stuff, I guess. And I was always writing songs. Uh, yeah, I went to college uh, for jazz guitar. Nice. Actually, classical guitar. Studied in college. And then I started like a rock band, like a hard rock band. Um, that's what I was focusing on for like five years in Maine and uh we'd we made three records together and um did some touring and stuff and yeah then I moved to New York and it, it's is when I moved to New York and kind of left that that band I kind of it's like okay and now I just want to play acoustic guitar and sing and write songs and it just got it got more and more country basically like as the years <laughs> on, like without even me thinking about it you know that's that seems to be like a common thread with a lot of uh with a lot of people that kind of fall into it um yeah i i similarly was in like a heavier band and i it's, there's some i remember being on tour when i was in the heavy bands and bringing the big amps and like the sound guys being like one day you're going to be playing a little amp <laughs> You know, and you're like, oh no, we got these big beefy amps. And now I'm like, I have a five watt amp that I take with me on the road. And I'm like, oh, yeah. yep, they were right. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. I had a stack. I had like a big like Marshall <laughs> 5150 or whatever. Oh, what was the Laney? I had a Laney. A Laney. Yeah. A Laney stack. I had yeah. a, a 5150, the um, Eddie Van Halen. Yep. Half stack. It was way too much. <laughs> of course, you know, but yeah, it's fun though. Really fun. It was fun, yeah. Didn't really know what we were doing. We just played it loud. Yeah, crank it up. <laughs> so with the uh, with your new solo record, you said you'll probably be doing a lot more touring on that. Are you going to be doing uh, like solo runs or full band runs with that? Uh, probably full band. I mean, it's like definitely a full band record. It's pretty hard hitting like honky tonk music uh it definitely it needs it really needs like fiddle and steel you know yeah. so i mean i can i can play stuff by myself it's to- it's a very different thing i guess um you know. right yeah i know it really is um i, I kind of do a similar thing and you know, sometimes you just want to strum a couple of chords and have the band do it. You know, you don't want to have to do all the fancy finger picking stuff. And yeah, it's nothing like having a band behind you. I know it just, yeah, it just, the songs are like meant to be played that way, you know, like with a tight country band and, um, you know, I could sit there and do them. It wouldn't be as fun, but right. Uh, are you heading out to the West Coast for the runs? Or are you hitting all on all fronts? Um, you know, it's actually it, it, nothing's been booked at this point. So um, I, ideally, yeah, I'm heading back out west, and I would do the whole country for sure. Um, it's been a couple years since I, I did that, but um, hopefully, yeah. That's awesome. And with being in Nashville, um, have you been able to go out and see any shows? Is the one you're doing uh, Saturday like the first one you've really done? Or um, I've been going out uh, quite a bit since I've been here. Um, I'm fully vaccinated at this point, and I also had COVID. Uh, and I... Um, you know, I'll wear my mask and stuff and, uh, go out and see some live music. I've been, I've been seeing some, some really good music out here actually. Um, and meeting a lot of nice people and it's been fun. Um, I did like one, I did that acoustic show at D's and then I, and I played at the Legion one night, the American Legion post 82, um, for honky tonk Tuesday. I did that. <clears throat> um one night as well but yeah this is like my first show um that's kind of like all original all 
my band and, um, you know, like it's properly advertised and ticketed and stuff. So it's, I'm really looking forward to it. It's been way too long. Yeah, I am too. I'm looking forward to coming out and supporting and I haven't really, I've, I've been to a couple of shows at D's cause they've been handling it really well. Um, but I'm only half vaxxed. So, you know, I'm, I'm being a little more cautious currently, but, uh, uh, yeah, I know the basement's got the little four top tables and you got to be like, you know, wear the mask and all that stuff. So they're being really responsible about it, responsible about it as well. So I'm, I'm excited to go out and check that out. And then I just had DL on the show, um, on the last episode and he's also doing his album release. So that's super cool. Yeah. I'm excited. It's a, it's a good lineup and if we get, hopefully we get some good weather and it'll just be able to be a nice sunny day out there and chilling and watching some music. Well, man, thanks so much for uh, coming by. I really appreciate it. Um, you said August is probably when the solo album is coming out and American Grenadine, which is the Rose Petals uh, debut release. Is that right? Debut? Debut release. Um, yeah, that comes out next week on the 23rd. 23rd of April. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, my solo record will be August 13th, we're looking at at this point. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's going to be a good summer. And everyone follow Envoy Records because there's going to be more work from uh, Peter Donovan as well. Probably what, at the end of the year? Yeah, we're looking at uh, the fall for that, like October, November-ish. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for coming by. I uh, really appreciate it, man. Yeah, well, thanks for having me. Um, I'll, I'll be seeing you around, I'm sure. Yeah, I'll see you this Saturday. And I did indeed see him that Saturday at Back to Business at the Basement, uh, presented by Sweetheart Publicity. Um, so be sure to watch out for video questions with him, D.L. Rossi, and the Danberries. Those will be coming out uh, here in the next month or so. Stick around because Volk will be next up on the podcast. So uh, go rate and review. Help us get higher in the rankings, and I'll see you next time. Uh, I'm Will Payne Harrison.